I'm really a proud mother to see so many Sahajogis. And one must understand that even if you get few people as newcomers, they may be few. But one has to realize that each one of you is now a realized soul. Each one of you have grown so much that you can create a nucleus yourself and after growing in a collective way together. Now individually the seedlings have become strong shoots now and they can definitely be transferred into different places and work because each one of you is a prophet. I wonder if you realize it or not. Of course you have got the joy of realization, the bliss, everything you have got. You have grown up. Slow and steady you have achieved it. And as you have grown as a tree now, everyone you of you is so important and so powerful. I know that few people come in in a collective way and you find it difficult in the beginning how to deal with them because they are still not grown enough. They are still not up to the point where they really realize their own importance. But you should all understand your own importance and your own quality that you have achieved. In any other so-called fake organizations, for example, say, take a church, there is only one priest. In the whole locality there is one priest, though he doesn't know anything about it, doesn't matter. But still there is only one person who is authorized even by church. Everyone has to listen to one person. But here, now, you all are dynamic people. Each one of you is capable of giving a good lecture. Of course, all of you can give realization very well, no doubt about it. In all your groups you must try. Standing on your own legs, try in your own groups. Think of all the dimensions into which you can shoot up. Because now you are ready, you are now the prophets. You don't have to depend on anyone as such. Or you don't have to depend on your fellow beings also for that. Individually you can do it, though you are connected with each other. You all understand the same language, you have got the truth together and you are all together. But the dynamism must come individually into you and every one of you in your own sphere, in your own life can work it out because you know all about Sahaja. Now those who are half-baked may not. They still are rationalizing maybe something, doesn't matter. They will also be all right. But as far as you all are concerned, we are all prophets. And as prophets, you must thank. Wherever you go, you talk of Sahaja Yoga, tell them that this has come to us, this is the life, we know everything. I mean, you don't have any doubts about it, isn't it? But the trouble is that you feel that the others may not understand, they are stupid people, they are foolish people, or they are ego-oriented, or they are aggressive, or they will do this to you, or do that to you. It's true, but you must know that there's not only one person who's fighting it out, there are thousands all over the world who know your language, who know your thing, 
they all know the same. So you are not alone fighting it out. Once you know that, then you will be amazed how much power will start flowing. The more you think about it, Meditate upon yourself now, I would say, and know that you yourself, you are prophets. And then you see the dimensions into which so many are my dimensions sitting here, I can see them. So in every field, in every walk of life, wherever you move, you have to talk about it and tell them. Now, <coughs> there are certain things we have made certain rules and regulations for Sir Yoga, Sir Yogis. That is just to see how many are really half baked and how many are full baked. <laughs> That's how we have made uh, certain rules and regulations. Because those who are really full baked will accept them without any difficulty. They are absolutely there. Now, as it is, we know there are many categories of people who come to us. The people who are top class get into Sahaja Yoga without any difficulty. They are top class. They achieve their powers, they assume their powers, they start asserting their powers, they just become like we say we have the complete pattern of the ring with us and only we have to put the diamond there. You find the diamond all right. They just settle down with it. But some people, even after realization, go a little bit beside that. Doesn't matter. They'll all come round. But those who are top class people are still, I must say, quite a lot. I mean, I can tell you I know so many gurus who are real gurus, not teachers, and real you forget, the fake you forget, but the real ones also. They haven't got a single one like that, not even a single person. Like Gagan Maharaj, he told me very frankly, he said, I said, why don't you give realization to them? He said, who gave me realization? I have to work very hard, this, that. All right. I said, you had a guru who gave you realization. So as a guru, it's your duty to give. And he said, I've given it to one person. I worked on it for 25 years. I cleared his agya, cleared everything, gave him. And what is he doing now? He said, now you'll meet your mother sometime, you must see this fellow, he's horrible. And he's the one who is now making money, running after him. After realization, after twenty-five years of his work, he said, I have nothing to do with this man. Now this fellow was called as Anna Mara. I said, all right, I'll have a look at him when he comes to Bombay. So he came to Bombay and one of my disciples had invited him to his house. Quite a rich lady, and she said, Mother Anna Maharaj has come, and uh, you had told that you'd like to meet this man, so he's come here. Went there, he of course touched my feet all right, <laughs> but he was smoking in my presence, just imagine. Uh, he touched my feet and sat down. He said, um, He started talking ill of his guru, first of all. The one who worked on him for 25 years, can you imagine? I mean, you are very kind, and you don't talk ill of me. I have not worked for twenty-five years on you. <laughs> and look at it. He was talking ill of his guru and he said uh, that you see my guru, uh, why why should he go to why should he go to Bombay? Now what is the need? Because this fellow was making money in Bombay, so he didn't want his guru to go there <laughs> to tell against him. And why should he go to Bombay? He should not leave his place. He was all right on the on top of the mountain. What was the need for him to come down and all sorts of things he was talking? That's a really that is your guru. You are not talking now. He said, but this is true. He need not have left the place, you see. And he was still smoking. I said, all right, I have to go. With so many women around him, pressing his feet, this, that, taking a lot of milk and enjoying himself and smoking and talking in a very condescending manner with his so-called disciples. Both is the simple people. I said, I'm right, I have to go now. So, so uh, you just put some, uh, I, I'll give you some uh, kumkum on your forehead. 
so I took some kumkum and put it on his forehead. So he hugged me, I was just burning. Oh, I took him and I said, that's what. Now, I said, all right, now can you? Uh, I'm going now, you put some on my forehead. And I sucked his feet inside. He couldn't move it, just like that. <laughs> 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 he said, leave me, leave me, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, now, you just promised you'll not talk ill of your mother. Then only I'll leave. He said, oh, all right, all right, all right, please, please. <laughs> so I left the big feet. But see now, the Sahajogini lady who was there, who has been saved from so many problems because she was a clairvoyant person. To her, he told a lie, a complete lie. He said, I was giving power to mother. See, they saw it from a distance. So I was shaking because I was giving power. No, he was shaking, he was giving me power. <laughs> but this lady should have understood that when you shake, it means there's something wrong with you. And you know, he said that now I will give you also such powers as gave it to mother. That time it was just the beginning of Sahaja Yoga, I should say, quite the beginning. So now you better have a yagya. Oh, for that all of you must bring one and a quarter tola of gold. That's about ten grams. And give it to me. That was the beginning of the end. All their money, all their property, everything he sucked in somehow. And his sister, uh, her sister met me when I was traveling once from Delhi to Bombay and she just fell at my feet and started crying. I said, what's the matter? She said, Mother, this fellow has looted us. I said, who? The Anna Maharaj. I said, how? But that day you saw him shaking. That's the thing. So how she was befooled by this fellow who told him, a complete lie. If she had seen the vibrations of this man, it would have been all right. And this is what Sahaja Yogis forget. They are prophets, they have their powers. But their power is their spirit, is their vibration. And they forget it all the time that we have got a new awareness, vibratory awareness. We have to judge everything on vibrations. And that's the only failing point of all the prophets. If it is untruth, I'm very innocent, you know, I'm very simple-minded. I just don't understand things at all, you see. I don't know the crookery of man, how he goes round and tells lies and this, but on vibrations I know what it is like. Absolutely. You may tell me any stories, with all your cookery, with all your intelligence and all your special sharpness, I know what you are up to because only I know what I am up to. <laughs> but otherwise I am very simple. I can't rationally or anything I can understand. But by vibrations I know where you are. In the same way, you develop your vibratory awareness, its sensitivity, and try to understand things through vibratory awareness. If you can do that, then you will be perfect prophets. You will be perfect prophets. Now among ourselves also you will find there are people who are not up to the point. Such people should never be trusted, should never be trusted because they are half big. They might become negative, they might become positive. So they should not be trusted and they should be treated with little uh, reserve. Once they become all right, then you can take them into uh, your own fold. For example, recently a girl married somebody who is a great sadhu. Now because he said he loved her and all that nonsense, so I said, Oh, Baba, you marry her. But I knew that this one is no good, but what to say? And then this lady tried, actually she traveled with me and she tried even to clutch my heart the boots she had? Absolutely. Twice she did. So cunning, the spirits are so cunning in her. When she went back uh, to Australia, see, she put up a show in such a way that, oh, she is so insecure and her husband doesn't care for her and this and that. And the whole of that ashram, just imagine, would have been lost. 
But I knew something was happening, so I drunk all. Immediately I found out and told them now. See her vibrations. They said, Mother, we don't find anything wrong. At least they never saw her vibration to begin with. Because what happens once vibrations are lost, you can't feel it. She has engulfed all of them so much that they couldn't feel anything about her. Can you imagine? Then rationally I asked a question. Can you replace Warren for his boy? So one has to be very, very alert about it, extremely alert as to these people who are half big. They will always try to pull you down. Half big people will always try to pull you down unless and until you are firm enough to pull them up. Because they are not doing it, they are not aware of it, but they are under the possession of these people, when I mean, they do something, they try to do all anti-God activity. Another one I'll tell you was in, was in Geneva. In the beginning I don't tell openly about a person. As far as possible I don't tell openly because it's not proper. Give them a chance, they come up, it will work out, does it? I can manage. But when the nuisance becomes a collective thing, then one has to talk about it openly. You see, because these people will go to one person, say something, another person something, third person something. So you have to be very alert. And they are not aware of it. That's the best part of it. They are not aware of what they are doing. Like this lady in Geneva would go and ask him, what do you think about Mr. X or Mr. Y? All right? So you would say something. If you are negative, she would catch hold of it. Day before yesterday, I was very happy when Ray told me something good about Pamela. He said, Pamela is a very artistic lady. When you start seeing good points in other, it gives me pleasure, it gives me happiness, it gives me joy. But if you start seeing bad points in another, then I don't like. Sometimes, of course, when you, I also test you on that. Sometimes I say something, you see, deliberately I'll say, all right, something wrong with me. I may say. I know about whether it is wrong or right, just to judge how far you can judge that person. Then if you say supporting, do the right thing that he's doing, then I know that you are right. I like it. I appreciate you. I really adore you for that. That whatever is the truth you should tell me, because I know the truth, but I just play around with you to see what you think of another person. So try to see the good point in another. But on one point, you should understand if a person is quarrelsome, He's trying to overpower. In Birmingham we have a problem like that, which I have not yet exposed or said so. Still I have kept a secret, but I am telling people that in Birmingham there is a problem. And that problem comes from one person who is not aware of it. I will talk to that person, tell that person that he should get rid of this problem. But if he does not, then I have to tell about it openly. because I don't want Birmingham Center to be lost. We would have lost Geneva. I tell you, we would have lost it. Everybody went against each other, big problems were created by one person. Though you are full-baked, still you are not so collectively aware and appreciative of others as you should. You are all one. Not only appreciation, but you can't do without each other. So slow and steady, as the English character is, which is a very good character, but it can be very slow. <laughs> slow and steady 
you must rise above above your own shells and see the beauty of another sir jogi and see the point that are good in that person so that you imbibe some people have certain capacities and surprisingly then i talked to pamela about ray and she praised him a lot and that really made me extremely happy though i must say brighton may not have been so uh, bright yesterday in the program there were few people but then that this is very energy giving to see that sir jogi is appreciate now somebody has a problem say life sided people always have a problem in my lecture they go off to sleep naturally they have <laughs> it doesn't matter whatsoever i'm working on them even if they are sleeping <laughs> when i work on on them i have to sleep myself to go into them see so that drag is there doesn't matter it will come up there are ways and methods of how to work it out but that's not so important to me what is important is are you sleeping towards your fellow man fellow sir jogi are you alert about them? they are just like your hands eyes nose everything you are all one you cannot do without each other because you are the only people who have now got the eyes to see you are the only people who are aware we are not few think that we are very few see maybe the other gurus they might get thousands of them they are useless as they go they come out maybe added up tails and uh horns they might have but they are not aware and you are aware on one side you have to pull out the people who are not aware so much on the other side you have to appreciate people who are more aware and this is what one has to understand every quality of every nation is going to help sajo see for example i would say that french they have lots of disqualifications maybe but they have one quality whatever they do they do it seriously i mean even nonsense <laughs> even nonsense so this quality of theirs if they use for sahaj yoga if they develop that seriousness about it they are a great asset to sahaj yoga as i told you english have the quality to first of all they don't talk i don't know why their mouths are shut so much they are silent and they say less than what they should say they are upright slow and steady we also need people who have to be slow and steady and upright but the defect could be that we just allow things to happen and we do not stand up you may be slow but you must work if you say i am slow that means there is some speed somewhere isn't it there has to be some movement somewhere <laughs> even if something moves slowly it means there is a speed the slow words means there is a speed isn't it it doesn't mean that you are stationary slow means a speed and some speed you must have and that is what is you have to get up you have to arise you have to shoot up. they have been doubly blessed by sir jogis because now i'm stationed in london we have caxton program all right we go to every monday like to church listen to mother's lectures very nice lectures mother has given 
We appreciate it. Come back home. Done for the whole week. <laughs> no, you are prophets and you have special responsibilities as English Sajogis. That's why I came down to this country to work it out for so many years. I told you that in India I've worked only for three years. Now I've been here for eight years and maybe four years more. Why? What was the need to come to England and work? While you know in India I can get thousands like this who can get realization. You have seen with your own eyes. I've given realization to thousands and who are so beautifully placed in Sahaja Yoga. They are so solid. They are not the people who will come to one meeting and next meeting they are lost. They are not like that. They are steady people. They go ahead with it. But still why I am working here? Because this is an important position. Every cell of this heart is very important. And that is why you all should try to move. And do you know, the job of heart is to move things. It circulates. It must circulate. Try every method of circulation. Talk to people. You being English, you will understand the other people who are not yet there. They are also slow. They can't move fast. You see, it's a quality that a bull sits down, you know, then it won't move, whatever you may try. It's just sitting down, settle down. I'm very happy with that posture. So you have to say, where are you sitting? On top of what? Volcano. Tell them all about it. Give them the big message that the Redeemer has come now. There's no time to sit down. This is the one who is here. Better get up now. Don't carry on with your old ideas and old things. Must know that this has happened. And as I told you, the predictions can be used you can use anything that you want to use out of Sahaja Yoga. You can tell them anything out of my speeches, whatever you want. You have every right to do what you like with my speeches. There's nothing to be afraid of or worried about. Like the other day somebody said that out of protocol they did not do this. What is the protocol for children? Nothing. You are my children after all. You have every right that I can give you. So there's nothing like that. Something was not done. What did you say, Pamela? Uh, because of protocol. Huh? Yes, something she said. I've forgotten that. Uh, but what I would say that, because it is so obvious, that you are special people. You are being enthroned. I better recede in the back, like the Queen Mother is. <laughs> and let me see you rule. That would be much better. And don't worry about protocols and things so much. Go ahead. I mean, the interview, the, the thing that you have written in the newspaper, is not absolutely correct. <laughs> I don't mind because that will suit people. Uh, that certain things I have not done, like uh, helping Gandhiji. What could I help him? See? He never meditated. Yes, in a way it helps, but the way it is written is not that grossly. I did it in a subtle way. Doesn't matter. But I don't mind. Whatever you say is correct, whatever you do is correct, and it can be put right. Even supposing you say that it was exaggeration sometimes, the exaggeration can be achieved. Whatever you say will be the truth. So don't be afraid of saying what you feel like. Now, another back 
background of the English people is. This you should not be so much frightened of. That they will always say something with little less than what it is. I have to tell you, you should say with little more. If you have to make the bulu, you see, say little more than you can say because whatever you say is not more. This is infinite. But it should not be also so much that they can't bear it. Like uh, Warren had an experience, which I told him only tell the surgeon, please don't tell anybody else because they'll never do it. There was no petrol in his car, and he had to go for a propaganda. Bill. And he went wrong. And he did all his propaganda for eight days. And when they came back, the petrol was not available. The petrol pump. The fellow said, "Your petrol is full. Why do you want to have petrol? In? Why not?" That can be done. But don't tell anybody else because they'll just say this is cock and bull story. You see. See, you have heard the story of the bread and the fishes, because in the Bible it is so we believe. It. Why not today? You have seen so many things happening like that. I mean, so many things in your own lifetime. But all these things, if you tell them, they won't believe. So your wisdom is in believing that you are in the realm of God and He is Almighty. And that he is going to give you everything that you want and aspire. <coughs> People won't believe. I know, <coughs> but it's true. Whatever is desired, you can get. But if you tell people, they won't believe. But as far as Sir Jova is concerned, you have to make a statement which is not reserved but open. With confidence, the diffidence that is put into it because of this training is not. With confidence, yes, it is so. It is so. This is what it is. Like first when I went to India, Rahul Bai. No, such an elderly lady, an Indian lady. They feel little shy about her. She's the one with full hand up in the air. She was shouting, "Bolo Mata Ji, Nirmala Devi ki." And Modi looked at him. Her, he couldn't raise his hand. He was little shy. She went twice, and then she lifted his hand and said, "What's the matter with you, tall man? Why God has given you height for what? Raise your hand, son. A poor fellow yet to raise." Have boldness. Have complete confidence in yourself that you are realized soul. That you are prophets. Not to be upset or worried about things, but you are prophets now. Assumption. In, in Sanskrit, it is said, "Nar." That is. Energy is parmi, viraj. Miss, enjoy that energy. Viraj, ra is energy. Viraj means you enjoy that energy of that throne. Assume it. You are the king now. Behave it. It is not arrogance at all. A person who is a king is never arrogant if he is a real king. If they are borrowed kings, then it's different. But if they are real kings, they can never be arrogant. So, with that special type of royal behavior, you will attract. It's not putting up show. Is you are. On the contrary, this is the reservation you are having for what? <laughs> Need not dress up like beggars or not like dandies, but 
your dress should be such that you are a king. Not bother. And you'll be amazed. It will work. You are the people who have the greatest of mind. But I and company. And also I know your language. I have given more more speeches in English than in my you know, own my own mother tongue or in Hindi. Can you believe it? And so many Indians now who did not much care for English after independence are trying to learn English now. And they are afraid that one day English may replace Sanskrit the way mother knows Sanskrit. <laughs> so I have to make a very, very simple request to you that assume, assume your power, assume. You are no more slaves. You are realized souls now. With this personality, you will really enhance the beauty of such a Unless and until there are flowers on the tree, the tree has no meaning. And the flowers have to be up, they don't hide. Have you ever seen any flower? hiding itself. They covered the whole of the body of the trees and fragrant, assuming their own powers. And the fragrance springs. Everybody knows the flowers are up. All the bees are up. That's how you have to assume your powers. Inside, outside both. Not only inside, outside. And they'll be amazed at your confidence, at your compassion, at your capacities, and the greatest of all, the complete vidya, the complete knowledge of Sahaja, the complete knowledge of Kundalini, the complete knowledge of Divine, which you have.